Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being with me today. I wanted to quickly jump onto the computer and start a, a video on this topic because I have uh, received a lot of questions and comments about this specific topic and I wanted to address it. I'm going to save time, I, I've completely skipped the intro, I want to uh, start diving in into the topic to save time, but allow me to, to spend just a minute talking about port forwarding in general. If you ask me, you should not be using port forwarding at all, period. If you want to access internal services when you're outside of your network, you should be using a VPN. Port forwarding means that you are punching a hole through your firewall. Conveniently, you can use it, but conveniently enough, also every other attacker on the internet will also be able to use it. If you still want to use port forwarding, what port forwarding actually is? Port forwarding is a way for you to sort of bind or attach a certain port, usually a TCP port, into an internal client on your network that will receive this request from your firewall. It will not block it. It will forward, it, forward these requests and you, for example, can open up a web browser, type your IP address, call in the referenced port, and the router will actually forward your request and display the service that you have port forwarded. So, usually, requests from the internet will come into your router and be blocked. The router will know they should end there and they will end there. But when you create a port forwarding entry and you then reference this port on the internet coming into your network, for example, port 8001 in this case, if you've created a port forwarding rule, the router will know it, it, it shouldn't block the request and then it will look inside to see what internal host it should point to and then forward this request in this example to your NAS and display the Synology NAS, for example, web interface. That's what port forwarding is in general. By the way, the only problem in this diagram is that you need a public IP address from your ISP and if you have a static IP address then you can try to write it down or memorize it but if you have a dynamic IP address, then you have no chance of memorizing it. And for this, Synology gives us for free a dynamic DNS service that will give you a static DNS FQDN or a value that you can always reference. And the router itself will take sure, will make sure, sorry, to always update if your IP address changes, it will know to always reference the correct IP address. So let's dive in to my Synology SRM and actually this is the first step that you need to take is create this dynamic DNS service or enable it go into your network center internet and quick connect and DDNS scroll down to DDNS and add an entry the service provider will be Synology so now you can choose your desired host name. For example, let's say Take Me Out, and you can always, and you can also, uh, by the way, choose a different ending or a domain. Let's stay with Synology.me. Let's sign in to our Synology account. I will also advise to check request certificate from Let's Encrypt. Again, it's for free and agree to the terms and services and click OK. All right, for me, it took about two minutes. If you're not uh, checking the uh, request, let's encrypt center certificate, it will take a lot less. But the end result is I have a host name that I can always reference when I'm outside of my network. Great. The first, the next thing that you, that you need to do is not yet to go into port forwarding, but rather to your local network and DHCP clients. In my example, I only have one host, but you need to find the host that you want to port forward to and make sure to create a DH an address reservation. It will, it will create a DHCP reservation and this will make sure that the internal IP address of the host will not change. Click on add address reservation just to make sure that the internal IP address doesn't change to the host you want to port forward to. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to actually create the port forwarding rule. 
Before we do that, let's go into a website that sort of simulates or checks port forwarding. Use your favorite search provider, type port checker. It will take you into this site. And let's say that we are going to port forward port 8001. And right now what we should see when we click, when we click on the check button is that the port is closed. So let's create a port forwarding rule to port 8001. Let's go into port forwarding. Let's click on create. Let's call the port, the port forwarding, sorry, entry. Let's call it 8001. In our IP address, we can click on the drop down conveniently enough and select our internal host that we want to port forward to. Public port 8001. Usually, you should also check 8001 in the private port. By the way, you don't have to. I will get to it maybe a little later. Choose TCP if you if you know it's if if you know it's a TCP port, and click on create, and click on apply. At this point, we have created a port forwarding rule. But actually, in this example, there's nothing behind this this internal IP address that listens to port 8001. So let's create a, a, a very dangerous uh, port forwarding rule. I recommend that you never, never do that. Let's create a port forwarding rule to our, uh, our computer that we're sitting in front of. On port, on the RDP port, the host will be my computer and the port will be the RDP port 3389, 3389, TCP, apply. I only created this port forwarding entry just to make sure that I run a port checker check and there's actually a service listening on this port, otherwise the port check will fail. So let's go back to the port checking website. Let's change the port to 3389 and let's click on check. This time it seems that the port is open since there is actually a host listening on this port. Just as example, if I now delete this entry and now go back to the port checking website, click on check and now the port is closed. So we can actually see that the port forwarding rule is in effect, it's working. The problem is that once we create a port forwarding rule, it also cre creates behind the scenes a firewall rule, otherwise the traffic won't be able to go through. So let's go into traffic control, sorry, into security, sorry, in firewall. You can see our 8001 entry, it's grayed out, you cannot edit it. And this will make sure that any request made from anywhere in the world, referencing port 8001, will be allowed to go through the firewall and be referenced to the host inside our network. What we can do if we have on our remote location a static IP address, we can create a port forwarding rule to limit down or narrow down the, uh, the scope of who is able or who is allowed to be referenced or forwarded into our host. Let's go back to port forwarding. First of all, let's delete this entry and click apply. What I want to do is click on settings and uncheck generate firewall rules automatically. What this will allow us to do is it will create a sort of, a, a, let's say, more, more work for us since when we create a port forwarding rule, it won't create a firewall rule. We will need to manually create a firewall rule, but when we manually create a firewall rule, we can narrow down who can use it. Let's create a new port forwarding entry. Again, let's select our computer. Again, let's select the RDP port, which again, I really advise not to do that. Click on create, click on apply. 
Now, when we go to security and firewall, we can see that we do not have a grayed out firewall wall. We will need to manually create one. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's call it port, sorry, port forward 3389. Protocol is TCP. The source, that's, that's the beauty of it. Instead of it being all, we can narrow it down, for example, to internet hosts using a specific IP or if you don't have a specific IP that you want to reference, you can select, for, ex for example, a region. It doesn't have to be any, anyone in the world. It can only be used, for example, in your home country. So let's use this option and select, for example, United States. We are not located in United States, but ju just for example, Click on OK. Destination needs to be LAN. And I will select the specific LAN if, you, if you're using VLANs. I will select specifically the network the host is located on or connected on. And then I will select a specific IP address. In our case, it's 182.168.1.189. Ports, let's select custom and select 3389. Action will be allow and click OK. I will move this rule above any blocking rule. It doesn't have to be on top. Let's click on save. So we have created our rule. Now, let me just explain one more thing that some people find a bit confusing from time to time. The reason that you, you, that you don't need to specify the port on this section, on the source section, you need to leave it on all, you, know, you do know what port you will be requesting, but you do not know the port that you will be coming in from. This will be a random port. So you don't need to uh, close down or specify the port here. You need to specify the port forwarded here in the destination. All right, so even though I am not located in the United States, the website, the port checking website does come in from an IP address in the United States. So I do hope that uh, when I port check the, uh, right now, I will still get a port open message. Let's go ahead and try. Let's click on check and indeed the port is open, meaning the firewall rule that we have created is indeed allowing the traffic to go through just for good measure. Let me disable the rule and click on save. All right, so now let's do the port checking again. And now since the firewall rule is disabled, the port is coming back as closed. So this is guys, guys, this is how we can, if, if we must use port forwarding, this is at least the way for us to get a little more control over who is allowed to use the port forwarding entry. So guys, this was my uh, be zero to hero video on port forwarding on Synology SRM. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a like. It will help us get this video to more people. Join us on social media, on our Facebook groups, on our, uh, on our Twitter. And I hope to see you all on our next video. Bye, everyone.